Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how I strive to achieve uh, photorealistic realism with my AI influencers and kind of my process of how I create images, uh, get the skin to look realistic, you know, create realistic little video loops like the one you see on the screen here. And I'll even show you how I train LoRa's uh, combined with my LoRa data prep tool that I use and have created, which is available on my Patreon as well. So what you see on your screen right now is a combination of an Audrey Hepburn LoRa I trained, uh, a Flux Crea image I generated and turned into a video, and then a couple of custom LoRa's that I've trained myself. So. We're going to go through the process and recreate what I did here and then I'm going to show you how you can do skin detailing and how you can train your own LoRa's uh, quite easily. Anyone can do it to be honest, it's super easy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is train a LoRa. I'm not actually going to train it live in this video, I'm just going to show you how I prepare the data, how you prepare the workflow and everything else that goes into it. We're going to do it with Flux because you know I love Flux and it's very uh, user friendly, user hardware friendly I should say, you can run it on your computer at least. Okay, so the tool we're going to be using today is called Ostris AI Toolkit. Now this is a free, I believe it's open source, LoRa training tool that I love to use. I find it uh, very simple compared to Koya SS and the other ones. To each their own, but this is the one that I like to use. So this is the tool that you use once your data is prepared. So the most important step is prepping your data properly, making sure your images uh, are captioned correctly and accurately for what you're trying to achieve. So the most important step to LoRa training is actually preparing your data. So what I did was created a tool that helps you caption all your images automatically, gives you the correct file name, um, and cut and tailors it for whatever checkpoint you're using. Now, for whatever reason, when I click these, these checkpoints and drop downs, it doesn't actually show anything, but when you click checkpoint, for example, here, it shows, you know, Quen, SDXL, Flux, Wan, Hanyon, you know, all the checkpoints you need. The training profile, so you know if you're trying to train a face or a vibe or you know a body part or whatever else, it'll help you with that. All kinds of settings. So this is the most important thing to get ready. Um, it's really simple to use and if you need, have any questions on how to use it, just reach out to me on Patreon. I'm, I'm happy to help you. Um, I literally use this for all my AI work. Uh, you're gonna find it useful as well. So if you subscribe to my Patreon, you can get it there. Uh, download it, use it as much as you want. It's never gonna expire. So let's pretend we went through that whole thing. We've trained our data. I've already done that. I've got a file here with all my Audrey Hepburn images and captions. There you go. There you go, right? So this is a really, really quick, really quick. So we're going to create a new job on the left there. Call it Audrey. Audrey 2 is our trigger word, let's say. You're going to choose Flux. Now, depending on how you want to train the LoRa, you can change the rank a little bit. Uh, if you increase this, I find it clings onto the face a little more. So for doing something like an Audrey Hepburn LoRa to capture her face consistently, I would make it higher. But if you're doing a vibe or kind of a look or you just want a, you know, a general atmosphere, I would lower that. All right, our data is now correct. We have the Audrey Hepburn data set that we just made. These are your resolutions of the images you're training, the file size. There's a lot of controversy over this, but I train almost everything in 512. It's faster and it looks just as good as 1024. This isn't an, an exhaustive tutorial of how to use this, but this is my general setting. So if you disagree, that's totally cool. You can do what you want, but that's how I do it. So it gives you a bunch of default prompts as well. Uh, well, it generates, it generates sample images every 250 steps or so. So you can kind of see how the lore is progressing and uh, how the realism is enhancing as it goes on. So, you know, you would do something like Audrey 2, which is your keyword, a woman sitting on a park bench drinking coffee. So the first iteration would just be a default flux generation of what it thinks you're going for. And then as time goes on and it studies the Audrey Hepburn images and captions, that Audrey 2 trigger is going to give it the consistent face of Audrey Hepburn. So that's how you do it. That's a really basic rundown. Um, Ostris AI Toolkit is fantastic. In combination with my LoRa Helper tool, you're gonna to be able to create great results. So let's fast forward, let's pretend you've trained your LoRa and let's get back into Comfy UI. Okay, so we've made it back to Comfy UI. This is just a very basic uh, blank workflow for Flux Crea that I like to use. So I'm gonna show you two things I have here. So, 
I've got my Audrey Hepburn Laura that we just trained. Now 1.0 can be a little bit dominating. I'm going to put it down to 0.9 just so we leave room for the other Laura. Now this is one that I've trained myself and that's available on my Patreon as well. Uh, it's called my 80s Babe Laura. Now this gives you that kind of realistic, candid photo look. Um, I initially trained it to, you know, make my models kind of have that 80s vibe with you know, 80s fashion or 80s electronics, but I actually use it now to sprinkle a little realism into all my flux generations. I find it gives a very candid look. Um, it kind of tricks the eye. It really enhances the realism. You can let me know what you think. So we're going to start real simple here. This is the one I had before, but I wasn't huge on it. Also, you're getting a little secret sauce on another vibe that I like. This has nothing to do with my Laura, but if you put 2000s VHS tape, again, I find it gives a really cool look. All right, so you know how we do it. Always doing it live, always generating it on the fly. So let's get some Audrey Hepburn images going that we're going to bring into the WAN 2.2 workflow after, and let's see how it goes. Okay, so we've generated an image. No cherry picking as usual. I didn't expect her to be in a bikini like that, but we ball. So we take that image, copy image, and let's bring it over to our WAN 2.2 workflow. Now, this is a really cool workflow. Um, it does take some time, but it uses the scaled WAN 2.2 checkpoints. Uh, it's an image to video workflow, and it also has upscaling. Now, I'm gonna try generating this with my OBS recording, but it is possible I'll have to cut it and try again. I don't know if my computer can handle both at once, but we'll see. So let's do that. Nothing special is happening here. I do have Sage Attention enabled for my 5090. There's no Laura's enabled here. Um, we're just using that Audrey Hepburn image that we created earlier. So let's see how it goes. This will usually take about, I don't know, maybe six to 10 minutes on my computer. So. We're going to fast forward, or if my computer crashes, uh, I'll cut and then show you the final results. So let's get going. We'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Looks like my computer couldn't handle OBS and the generation, but you gotta believe me, no cherry picking. There's the image, this is the first gen. Now let's zoom in and take a look. I'm really happy with how this came out. Now this is really cool. I like that the camera's shaking a little bit. Even the people in the background have very realistic movements. Check this out here, wow. That's great. Okay, now that's how you do it with WAN 2.2. You do need a 5090. I would say for this portion, but you could use the WAN 2.1 workflow that I have on Patreon. Uh, it's an image to video workflow as well, and it has an upscaler. So that is a little bit better for maybe someone who has a you know, 5070 or 3090 or something like that, one of the older powerhouse video cards. But yeah, that's how we did it here. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is how we get skin realism. Now, I'm not gonna do it today, but it's a little program called Enhancer. So what this does is it allows you to upload images and then customize uh, some skin realism here. So you can kind of see a before and after. So if we zoom in a little bit, let's see. Yeah, so if you take a look, without it, it's quite smooth and adds a lot of imperfections and realism to the skin there. You can see the pores, the eyes are better. Now this isn't a free service. It's just kind of an added thing I wanted to show you to get extra realism in your generations. Um, I don't use it that often, but I have in the past when I really, really care about the product that's coming out and how real I want it to look. So yeah, that's something to think about as well. Anyways, that's all we have for today. So with Flux Korea, WAN 2.2, uh, Ostris toolkit and my Laura trainer, you can get some pretty crazy results on any modest system for the most part. Uh, I will have this workflow up on my Patreon as well. 
Um, I didn't create this one. This is one I found. I don't know where it came from. I always buy, find them and then save them, and I just I don't even know where they come from half the time. <laughs> so if this is your workflow, shout out to you. Leave me a comment if it's you. I will post a link to the original download. Otherwise, it's in my Patreon. All right, guys. Have a great weekend.